Center of Weirdness, a hilarious flight into the silly world of a podcast that might as well not exist. Josh and Skinner, two loners on a crusade to champion the cause of the dumb, the bad, the weird. In a world of programs that operate above the ratings. Hello and welcome to Center of Nightness. <laughs> it's normally Center of Weirdness, but we're covering uh, Night Rider all summer long. It's our uh, Summer Nights series. Um, you know what this show is if you've listened to it at all. Uh, we talk about weird TV episodes and um, we stumbled upon this, uh, this uh, amazing series of Episodes of Knight Rider, uh, a show that I have no connection to whatsoever, that are all about Michael Knight and his sort of twin brother, Garth. Um, and so we thought, we got to talk about them. I'm Josh, and with me as always, of course, is Skinner. Hey, Skinner. Hey, Josh. Hey, all you banana-headed bovines out there. <laughs> Good. I'm glad you remembered that line from the episode, because one, it makes no sense whatsoever, and I don't know what it means. I mean... If I was a car, I also would have trouble coming up with insults for humans because I wouldn't really understand the concept. But <laughs> it was really weird that he said that. He was so salty but had no way of really communicating it in a way that made any sense whatsoever. <laughs> There's a couple yeah. things said in this episode that don't make any sense. Uh, uh, but yeah, more than a few. So uh, this yeah. is this is Goliath Part 2. Um, Knight Rider, uh, season two, episode three, technically, although I think I've seen something where it said it was actually aired as the premiere, um, as, and it was, Goliath was aired as like a kind of a double, double episode, like a single movie length Man, this would have uh, fucking set the entire country on fire with how amazing <laughs> this was. <laughs> and we, okay, so it, uh, there's so much potential here for this show like to this episode in particular to do the things that we complained about in the last episode we said hey there's never a point where like they you know pretend to be the other person like they really drop the ball on that and then they do it in this episode but they drop the ball on it so hard that it's just not like it's not fun in any way. And I'm wondering if because there are there are two more episodes with Garth and Goliath, which I don't know how that happens. Um, but there are two more episodes in this season with these characters that we are going to cover. So spoiler alert, we're covering all of the Garth Goliath episodes of Knight Rider this summer. And I'm wondering if maybe they do more in those episodes, but like they i mean there's there's so much missing from the type of episode that you have when there's like doubles when there's two people that look identical and one of them pretends to be the other there are certain things that you want to see and this episode just does all that shit off screen <laughs> what's even funnier about it is is they kind of start to do a, a couple of the things and then they like you said they things happen off screen or they just blow it immediately it is the amount of things that happen off screen in this episode, incredible. But just like <laughs> every time you're like, okay, now they're going to go with this. And they're like, nah. They're just, this. they are only interested in the two vehicles running towards each other, which I'm guessing back then is what people wanted because they guess show they, it a lot. Well, yeah, they not only do they continually show that same shot that we talked about in part one where the the cars are running at each other they use that as the commercial break stinger like two more times in this episode but that's also how the last episode ends and how this one ends with the cars uh, with the car and the truck racing towards each other which this is one episode in real life in real life so you would have seen it like six times six times it's crazy uh 
I'm sure like 25 million people watch this plus because less channels then. But wouldn't they have been like, I get it. Like, <laughs> no, it, I don't. And think, it can I think t- that it's like what we have come to. This is this show is good because it allows us to watch shows from eras where we were. You know, this is before my time. Um, probably before. I mean, you were. I was. I can't remember what you said in the last one, but you were pretty. You were pretty young still when this show was six, kind of seven at most. Yeah. So, so you know, still kind of before our times in terms of like what we expected. But like, it's interesting to look back at these shows and kind of see what was acceptable from television and kind of what we would think of as being um, not great now because i think that we are in we have been in sort of the golden age of television for like the last i don't know two decades maybe where television shows have gotten really good and like the writing is really good and as we're recording this obviously the writer strike is still going on writers need to get paid appropriately they are the ones who are creating these fucking amazing stories um and television has really gotten good in terms of what you know, it what is able to put out there, and you can get some really, really good writing on television. And I think that what people were expecting in this era of like Knight Rider and other similar shows was was definitely a lot less. I think they were just they were just uh... they wanted to see the car. The car can be <laughs> magic, and they wanted yeah. to see Hasselhoff's face. And you got to see two characters who are both Hasselhoff. So, like, uh-huh. I mean, I'm sure to a degree this delivered exactly what people wanted out of it. I mean, the show didn't go off the air anytime soon after it. So there's sure. that. Yeah, they had two more seasons after this season. So, so I, here, with the, the writer's strike and stuff, you, you know, if you're online, which is always a problem, like you see the grifters on Twitter and such talking about, hey, who, who always weaponize, like, you hate this show uh, nerdy guy on the internet, you think you could do better. Well, AI can do better. If you had access to AI, AI could write these shows, right? <laughs> like there's this one going around that like, uh, Succession was so great, it's over, but what if AI could just write more seasons? Well, you don't need the people. With the idea, forgetting the idea that like, without the creative forces behind that show, the actors, the writers, producers, the sets, the people on the set, the people shooting it, the people locations, all these people who actually made the show something that you, in theory, and they didn't actually watch the show, it's a script. But in theory, if you love this show, you loved it because they made it. They didn't scrounge it off of autofill pieces of stuff that already yeah, happened. And, and it's not like the AI could generate more episodes if there hadn't been episodes in the first place. It, yes. Like, and, and what would happen if you had AI writing is you would have that going through the database of writing and come across shows like this and they would go into the algorithm <laughs> and you would get boring ass, stupid ass episodes like this, and it would hear things like banana headed bovine and it would regurgitate them. So, if well, you like, okay, that, now here's, a, here's an interesting thought. What if, like, if AI comes across a program with an AI as a central character, because that's essentially kind of what Kit is? He's a he is an AI. Like he is learning things. He, he can is, feel pain. He does say ouch in this episode. <laughs> yeah, he feels pain apparently, and also anxiety. Anxiety. Yeah, um, uh, he can. He he's magic. Yeah, he, he. So he is. He is. Uh, you know, becoming like sentient. I think as the show goes on, I don't know how far they take that. Probably not very. He pretty. I'm, I imagine that this you show. You think he is goes rampant where, at some point? You think that that rampancy <laughs> no. theory ever figures itself into? Uh, no, Knight I Rider? doubt it. I. Th- I think this is a show that resets at the end of every episode. You know that everything is back to normal. And he can't. He, are, just, he can't go rampant. Yeah, things are things are okay, like always. But I, what I was thinking is, is if like AI gets fed a show where there is like an AI character, does it then start writing episodes where the AI character is more central? Like it's pushing itself further up. So then suddenly the show just becomes about Kit and Michael is a side character who's not in every episode. What if Kit, like not only that, because it can if, if you're gonna go really further and you're, you're going to these the AI image stuff, like that person who was pushing a podcast with a horrifying fake Bill Gates talking to a horrifying fake Socrates, um, or Plato <laughs> or it was. Um 
and you you could just make a very tiny Hasselhoff like just sitting on the dashboard. He doesn't even need to drive at that point. Like a little tiny David. He's just sitting there eating his tiny little sandwich while he while Kit drives him around. Oh, that would be amazing. Or a a robot man who climbs inside a giant David Hasselhoff. You think the AI comes across the intro and goes, above the law? What does that mean? <laughs> I really like these uh these thoughts, this 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 interesting thought experiment of feeding an AI a show about AI or robots and seeing what it does with it. If it just starts killing all the human characters <laughs> off and making it only about the AIs. Well, I, like I said, like we are in a glory time of television of what is expected of it and of the writing and the creative forces. And we have possibly at the same time, the people at the top who are the, the least appreciative of the creative forces that go into anything. Uh, yeah, Cause of course. That, that, that doesn't help uh, vertical slices and vertical integration of things. But yeah. Um, what would be fun? What that is a, we're in a short time period and like, Regardless of what the media wants to tell you what AI is, because when they do the scare stories, it, it isn't what you think it is. It is autofill, uh, just yeah. taken to another level. It's, it's only taking things that have already been created and patching things together. It's getting better at that, but it's it's not creating things. It's not thinking. It's not – 99% of the time, it's not good. You have to filter out what it gives you and put something good together from it, right? Yeah. It, it's good at writing Java code. Who the fuck cares? Um, <laughs> but like, if it's going to go through all of television's history, um, littered with terrible shows. <laughs> like, for every good show, there's 2,000 bad shows, right? <laughs> so like, it's not going to, it might, we, we, we need a couple more decades of, of uh, prestige TV before the AI is going to be able to autofill into a show that's any good whatsoever. It's just going to have fatter and fatter men with skinnier and skinnier wives as it goes through all of CBS's shows and tries to make the perfect sitcom. <laughs> this is a really old fat man who works at a schlub job with the skinniest, youngest wife who's like 11 years old. And that's what it will think is a good TV show. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> and boy, oh howdy! Will those anime blue check mark accounts on Twitter love that fucking show? <laughs> so, all right. So, getting back to this episode, it'll be of, AI's penultimate glory. <laughs> yes, the penultimate glory. Um. So, so we we pick up where we left off with the the near miss of um, Michael and Kit almost getting crushed to death by Goliath. Um, it knocks the, it knocks the car on its side and we find, well, first we get basically a recap of the previous episode, which was helpful. Um, and then we see Michael, um, lying on the ground, um, with the, just a little bit of like cool blood in the corner of his mouth. Perfect it's hair. Like, yeah. It's like one of those things where it's like, oh, that cool, like little crack in the, in, in the, in the corner of your mouth with a little bit of blood makes you look awesome. Um, and so he it, it tries to figure out what's going on. Um, he pulls up uh, like Kit's uh, little diagnostic guide. He pull he pulls this like binder out of uh, out of like some little space under the seat. Um, it has like a chess piece on it. <laughs> it's very strange. And um, oh, I guess I get it now. It's a knight. It's a knight from the chess set. So I guess that's the logo of the company. Um, and he goes through the diagnostics and figures out how to make like a ramjet out of like Kit in its current incarnation. And Kit seems concerned about this because they can't navigate. Um, we don't see Michael do any of this. He just says he's going to do it. We cut away and then we come back and he's done it. <laughs> Which is happens a lot in this episode where he talks about something and then it happens off screen. This is like the first of it. This is more, more, maybe the most egregious. Because no, it's the second yes. most egregious because the other <laughs> one is too is much easier to do. Yeah. But like one, you could actually see Michael do something useful with the car, other than he just the car does everything for him. Yeah. Two, the car is on its side, like it's literally sitting on its side, pointing straight up, right? And the whole problem is he can't figure out how to get it back on its two feet and he's like i can't push you down and to a degree i'm sitting here wondering why can't you 
<laughs> you're pretty big. I mean, it's momentum, like gravity alone, once you start pushing a certain way, it's made to be on its wheels. It will fall that way. Instead, he, it, it, he does something with a rocket array. Yeah, it, it is unexplained, and it. I think it clearly doesn't matter to to the creators. They just want to kind of get this show on the road. They didn't really think about like, well, what would it mean if we had to then, uh, you know, deal with this guy being injured, the car being wrecked? Like, how do we how do we make it work? How do we fix this? And they were just like, ah, he just makes a rocket or something, and they just fishtail around the desert. <laughs> It's very it, and like it's funny because we have Kit go like the rocket array, oh that's too powerful blah 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 and I'm like why do you have it? <laughs> like, um, him fish tailing across the desert for I don't know thirty seconds. Good use of time. Very <laughs> yeah. funny. Uh, yeah, there's, doesn't there's lead to a any, lot of doesn't lead to anything either. Of, no, there's a lot of driving in this episode as you would expect from you know a show about a car that drives, but. They really do pad it out. It goes for a little bit longer than it needs to. And the, it, it just shows you kind of like that they really are padding out the episode runtime uh, as much as they can. Yeah. But like in this case, like he keeps acting like, oh, we, we're lost. My navigation is gone. Uh, how are we going to get out of here? They're fishtailing. They're going super fast. Like they, they're out of control. The car is half broken the it's it's hot enough to melt rocks he says which is funny because there's nothing but rocks none of them are melted and then you're like he's like how are we gonna get home he's like i don't know go straight we don't even know where we're at and then he walks into the house yeah then then yeah then magically he's just back at headquarters and everything's okay um and so then michael comes up with this like theory of why garth let him live and the whole like plan and everything, and it's it's a uh, it's quite a stretch considering that he doesn't know anything really about Garth other than like oh hey Michael uh, whatever the night dad dad night um, whatever his whole thing was is basically like I want to make a new son because my other one sucks so I'm gonna take this this random guy who got shot in the face and I'm gonna turn him into a better version of my son. Um, which is real fucked up, and uh, which it's so and, funny because when they when they recap that and they, and he's like, "Who is he? Why does he look like me?" And they're like, "Well, we thought uh, your your uh, your adopted dad who adopted you was a grown fucking man, middle aged <laughs> man." But like, we he thought uh, Garth was dead, so do we all. So that's why he did it. And like, that's not an answer. That is literally <laughs> not an answer. Why he decided well, to do that? I thought my I thought my son was dead, so I'm gonna make a new one. <laughs> Basically, like like it's it's Pinocchio essentially. Like my son died, so I'm gonna make a new one. <laughs> but why? That doesn't exist. <laughs> I mean, we didn't we didn't watch the first episode to be fair, so maybe it's explained. Maybe we get a long monologue about all of this, but I don't think we do because I think the the episode last time was the first mention of Garth as a character. So. I, you know, it, it, I think- it's funny that like we're intro- we are introduced as, as, as casual viewers who will now soon be the 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 greatest experts on the Garth and Goliath characters in podcast history. Um, <laughs> that we are introduced to the characters who are related to the person who set up the entire foundation of this show, like the entire like concept, the in, the in universe good guy organization, and the rest of his family are super evil. And it is never explained why his wife and son are super evil. No. And did, I don't and, think and, that, or like, I don't did think he know they is... were? They they become evil later? Like, he apparently did know he, his son was dead in Africa. But, like, it's never explained. Like, well, you know, I just happened to marry a super evil wife and who, you know, the, the, the good guys who were on, you know, casual chatting, uh, uh, terms with like they and she was introduced that episode so she was introduced as hey by the way the founder's wife is evil also son super evil and it's like <laughs> but why 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 yeah. why would you I, I know you had to have a reason why he looks like michael or michael looks like him but it is never explained, like, why is everyone else in his family, like, the ultimate bad guys in this show? No one seems that surprised by it. 
I mean, clearly she passed on the evil gene to Garth. She she is so happy to be evil in this show. And, but, and yet Devin, who is the head of the operation, who fails miserably every time he does something in both episodes or both parts, uh, is just like, you know, cool. Uh, you're – you – clearly she – is still part of the foundation that's it's funding this. I guess because I mean, he I had to go see her like more, but she had to go see her. She was still part of like, she knew everybody who had the formula. She had part of the formula herself. She, he, he went to her like she, he was going to like a, somebody who was on the board of the directors, uh, house for dinner. Like he, he he's both not surprised that she's evil, but he's on, perfectly good terms with her even after she poisons him it is like the the lack of concern on everybody about everything and once again there's another there's yet another scene in this show in this part two where no one is even slightly concerned or confused or even remarking upon the fact that garth and michael look exactly the same yeah well so we're about to get to that because michael's thing this this theory that he comes up with is that, oh, Garth left me alive because he wants me to see him win at Red Bluff when he steals all those missiles. He's not for, he's not correct, by the way. For yeah, for the 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 African Liberation Movement general guy, Pan African Liberation Movement Sambe, uh, the the leader of that group. So he, he's like, when I steal all these missiles, he, he want or when he steals these missiles, he wants me there to see him win. And I can't, he he would be he would be so mad if he lost to me. So I'm gonna develop a whole thing where I. I don't do that, but I go to a casino and I beat him at craps. So I'm going to do that by using Kit to help me cheat um, at, at at that. So they he goes to the casino. He finds him there at the craps table. He puts down a ridiculously large bet, um, like five thousand dollars or something, and then uh, and then it kind of constantly builds it over time. And uses kits like laser or something to cause the dice to move in the way that he wants from outside. From outside, I can't. It 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 is not explained at all how this works because again, it's fake and it's magic and it doesn't really matter. But it, it they they put so much emphasis on the molecular bonded shell and all this other things that like it in making a ramjet and all this stuff. It would be fine if they like at least tried to come up with it because they show him the laser earlier and they're like well we'll make sure it's fixed and then it looks like it's a weapon and then it's not because he uses it for rigging a dice game and then later he does use it as a weapon so (laughs) i guess it could be both it this is what this is a uh 80s trope where you could do magic and say it's lasers there's no there's no (laughs) reason he the car from outside that no one no casino today would let you just park your car outside through this long. Um, <laughs> would what? Why? Why would be able to use lasers like to get the get at the dice? Like they wouldn't even reach it. But like it's that it's that joke from uh, it's that joke from the Simpsons where where Xena is ta- uh, Lucy Lawless is talking to the nerds and she's like, whenever something doesn't make sense, a wizard did it. <laughs> yes, and in the case, the car is a wizard, which it kind of is. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but it's very funny that it does a couple things with the lasers in this episode. Actually, everything it kind of does with lasers, except for one thing, is completely ridiculous. And the one thing it does with the lasers that is kind of laserish, the car is like, huh, why would you do that with it? So but, they they yeah. gamble back and forth and um they're kind of and Michael is is beating Garth. Um, no one at the table is even slightly concerned that both these people have the same face. Yeah, no one says anything. Even this, they they even put some emphasis on this old guy who comes up. Um, and I thought maybe he was like a celebrity. We're supposed to know from like Love Boat or something. <laughs> I I couldn't figure out what that was because I don't remember him from. I don't remember him from the uh, from the earlier episode because he talks to Michael like he knew knows him or something like he he mentions like, oh, I saw you the other night and you were 
you was doing great. I'm broke now. I'm going home. And then like, and then he Michael got a young lady, of course. Some, yeah, Michael gives him some chips, and he uh, and he he gambles, and then they end up winning big. And Garth is is pissed off, and and most of David Hasselhoff as Garth is just him bulging his eyes. Oh, the performance out of his head is maybe worse in part two because there's more of it. Yeah, he he stands very straight. He has very tight slacks instead of jeans. Mm-hmm. And he's got a bigger hair, one earring, more tan, a, a, a Van Gogh, not a, like not quite a Van Gogh, but like just a mustache, soul patch, little beard. And he just bulges and talks slow. Yeah, he is more robotic than Kit. I mean, it, it's a it's it's very because oh, we forgot to mention that there's like an earlier scene where um, I guess uh, the the general. um uh, Sambe Kuna is mad at him because he's dealing with all this personal vendetta stuff. It just came like, out well, of nowhere, like everything yeah. else. This episode. He's like, we can replace you with another driver if we have to, if you don't step up. And he's like, how dare you threaten me? He just kind of talks through gritted teeth and like looks like he's about to explode constantly. And this was um, that was, that scene is so padded by the fact they're both doing both actors are doing this really weird two different very slow talk performances <laughs> this is just going on forever what are you two doing <laughs> yeah it's it's uh it, it takes a while but anyway so they we finally have a face-to-face meeting with them in the casino he walks across the table and and uh and they stare at each other you have a nice little split screen effect which is actually pretty decent like they, they do a good job of it um, for for what it is, like it's them face to face talking to each other, and and they do they do a pretty good job. And basically, he baits him into, um, you know, following him. So they're they're speeding down the road, and they use Kip's uh Kit's laser to freeze his steering wheel, which then causes him to like lose control of the car, and it drives into the back of a truck that uh that his his um his other people from the the corporation are so Devin and April are there in the back of the truck and Devin has a gun on him and they um they have uh basically kidnapped um they've they've kidnapped Garth and then we miss out on the very important thing that you have to do when you have d- a double story and we just see Kit pull back up to the casino with Michael inside dressed as Garth with a fake mustache on and everything. And it's like, you fucking missed the whole thing. Like, you don't have them come face to face where you where Garth sees Michael looking like him and is like, what are you trying to do to me? Blah, blah. Like, you don't get any of that. You don't get, like, Michael putting a fake mustache on and, like, trying out his Garth voice and, like, none of that. You don't get to see any of that fun stuff. Where, which you could have fit in if you cut out some of the driving. <laughs> Just none of that. Like, I wonder if they filmed it at all. I mean, they, they had to take, like, the whole concept, of, like, they they must have made Garth strip at gunpoint. Yes, and then, and then because they, he's and they, wearing Michael's clothes later. And then, yeah, and then they put him back into Michael's clothes, which seems like a mistake. And, I mean, it's he gets trapped so easily. It's so goofy. And like this is a scene where you have him like look face to face, and he puts on the mustache, and like they, per- he's like, "You don't look. You're not me. Yes, I am you now, or something." But also, where is to make scene- to make Garth angrier at him? So like he's out of control near the end because he's he, he, it's it's too personal, and and Michael's pushed him pushed all his buttons or something. And instead, yeah, like you you stole even more of my identity now by looking more like me. Because once again. Garth isn't doing this to look like Michael. He has an he has a legitimate beef that this guy his his father made for some reason. And once again, he, since his father is the good guy, it is it is it is, and they don't give a good reason for it. It just for some reason gave this random fella Garth's entire face. Yeah, and. Maybe his hog. We'll never know. Um, but like, <laughs> yeah. maybe maybe the next episode we'll find out. But it is so like the idea. What what it should be doing, I think, is 
if you're going to do a thing where Michael is almost always one upping uh, Gareth, but doesn't know his full plan, just have him constantly like hitting the buttons and making Gareth angrier and angrier at this. So he, he, he breaks. He has yeah, the he better car. something. Yeah, he has the better car. He has, he ha- he's, he is, his, he knows what he's doing. Michael doesn't know what he, what Gareth's doing. But like, just have him so like he finally snaps and he makes a mistake. Yeah, and also where's the scene? And maybe this comes in the 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 sequel episode later on in the season. So we'll find out next time, maybe. But like, you had the potential to do it here and you didn't. So it's weird that you would wait and save it for the second one, but. Where's the scene where someone doesn't know which person to shoot? You know, like they don't know which one's the real one. Like, it's which one is Michael? Which one is Garth? I don't know. I I'm not thought sure. for sure when Garth showed up. <laughs> we'll get to a second. Most immediately at the bad guys plan that that would be happening. Yeah. Instead, everyone knows immediately that the second Garth is the real Garth. And and I get it that that is a cliche. I get, like, because we've seen that, like, they were doing that back in, like, what, Star, Star Trek, the original series back in the 60s. So, like, these are things that were cliches that we knew, uh, you know, like, but then them not being here makes me miss them. So it's like... I guess it's in a way they're trying to if subvert they had done the so- expectations, but without having them, it makes it less fun. <laughs> The problem is, I think, and like if you're sitting there like, well, it's kind of cool they didn't do what you expected with, is that they didn't do something else interesting instead. Like for for <laughs> yeah. instance, so he's dressed up as Gareth. He's gonna in, he's gonna gonna go and use his his disguise as Gareth to get into what's going into Gareth's plan and figure yeah. it all out. He goes into the back to the casino immediately, but apparently in the meantime, he's gone to Gareth's penthouse. We do not see that. No, says, we don't see any of that. He just shows up. He grabs um, uh, the 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 woman, uh, Rita, right? Isn't that, isn't yeah, that Rita. her name, Rita? Yeah, he grabs Rita, and she's like, what are you doing? And he's like, it's me, Michael. Like, he immediately reveals, like, who he is, what's going on. He's like, I went up to the penthouse, and everybody's gone. And she's like, oh, yeah, I guess they already left for Red Bluff. And he's like, well, damn. <laughs> like, and then her whole story is she's trying to figure out what happened to her brother. Gareth, a few scenes earlier, just comes up to her and says, like, they found your your father, your brother's dead body in the, in the desert. Kind of kind of yeah. mock her. And I thought maybe he was just making that shit up. No, he's dead. Yeah. And yeah. then he just he shot him at the beginning of the episode uh, last time. And that was it. He's really gone. And remember, in the first the start of the episode, he appears to be some kind of investigative reporter trying to figure out what's going on at this hidden base. And Red, uh, going on between Red Bluffs and the Goliath factory and everything, the Goliath factory and whatnot, and is killed when he's trying to expose it, right? Yeah. Michael here says something like, oh, I'm so sorry. Did Your brother had such dreams of a gold record or something. I'm like, <laughs> or maybe her dreams are a gold record. Like, I think it's her brother's. It, it's like, or maybe wait, it is hers. I don't know. Wait, what? Like, you didn't show anyone singing. Where did this come from? <laughs> <laughs> gold record for what what are you talking how maybe much there it? was a throwaway line in the first part about her wanting to be a singer or something then have, have a scene, no idea show one scene less of the driving and have her singing at the casino <laughs> is that what she does there is that her job is singing at the casino she doesn't appear to be where <laughs> gold records a big jump from whatever anyone here is doing like they're not even close to it one's no. dead and she's such a minor part of the episode. It feels like it's kind of a waste. She's just in like, the car get, for the end and she doesn't do anything. I get I get why they like I get why they have that. It's kind of like a fun intro story where you kind of get into it and then you realize, oh, there's something else going on. But it feels just so relegated to being nothing at the end. And it's just like, well, this is kind of pointless. Like it didn't really need to be be here basically right it just makes you wonder how much this episode ended up in the cutting room floor or was in the original script and they pared it down yeah i i don't know because i mean if you have a two-parter you could have restructured this in 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 a certain um a certain way that with more would plot have, and like, less driving yeah <laughs> yes i would just think it's funny that because uh we in the first part, it was like, great, the 
The car can talk. It can play videos and it has onboard GPS. It's kind of bad. Like it can't figure things out itself. You have to give it suggestions. Like, why don't you look for red bluffs in like the fucking desert instead of the in instead of the, inside the city? It's called bluffs, you dumbass. And like it literally <laughs> has like a, a physical map that it's like searching around on, like not a database. I'm like, what's so fucking great about this car? Besides that light is so cool and the theme music is so good. But like in this episode, like all of a sudden it just has it can magically take over the the uh steering wheel of other cars uh i guess lasers how did it do that there's no computers in cars back then what did it take over <laughs> how did it lock the steering wheel of the other car i mean it I, why I mean, can't again, it do that to goliath because goliath has a shell i guess again a wizard did it but <laughs> so so michael shows up at the at the site of this of of near Red Bluff where they have like a <laughs> they have like a fucking RV set up with a with a little canopy out front and some picnic tables while <laughs> where the where the general and the evil mom are hanging out. I, I love and, when the actual like set is also the set. You know what I mean? Like yeah. they're reusing what they would actually be like staying in and having refreshments side and sitting at in between takes for the actual takes. <laughs> yeah. So he pulls up there and and they kind of uh they let him um they let him come over and they talked to the the mom and the and the general talked to him for a little bit and like everything is um everything is is okay and he's like i need a couple of minutes with goliath and he's going to go try to plant a bomb but before he can do that garth shows up because um moments earlier uh when when uh was it devin went to check on him he uh garth is just hanging out on the top of the cabinets in this little kitchenette area and he jumps down and and beats up Devin and steals uh uh a gun and then does actually a pretty cool stunt here which is climbs out of the top of the truck and uh hangs off the side of the trailer and leaps into the back of an open car uh like with the top down and then chokes out the driver and and takes off great stunt like you know I'm sure Someone could have very, very easily gotten hurt there because we do see a guy jump off the side of a truck into the into the back of a car. And someone easily um, could have been hurt back then, considering how sets were. Uh, like I said, when we were watching it. Weirdly, like 15 horses died in that making that scene. It doesn't make any <laughs> fucking sense, but it happened. You don't want to know how many dogs died, too. Um, but like, yeah, so then he so Garth shows up there, ambushes Michael Knight. Um, they have. A, a brief kind of interaction here where we get to see the, you know, back of the stunt double's head with his bad wig on that looks nothing like Hasselhoff's hair. Um, and then it's just like we cut away and we're like, all right, we go to commercial because he's been captured. And you're just like, well, that sucks. We don't even get to see him like rip the fake mustache off Michael. Like when we cut back, he just doesn't have the mustache anymore. And it's I mean, like, he, he, that would have been so much more fun if you had like the general or the mother see both of them together and go like, what's going on? And then, you know, he goes over and rips the mustache off and they're like, oh, you know, like you, you, you're missing all these fun little moments that are, that are kind of quintessential to like shows where the a guy looks like another guy and is pretending to be him. And he had caught so quickly and easily. Like he, yeah, he, he got was literally there for like five seconds. He didn't even like, he's like, I'm gonna go check on Goliath. And like five steps into it, Garth shows up and he runs off and he starts like gives it gives it away that he's the bad he's the he's Michael by running like somebody who has something to hide immediately. And it's like your plan sucked. <laughs> like you went through all that of trapping him in the back of a car like you were playing spy hunter in the arcade. And <laughs> Yet this was your plan, and you got caught immediately. Luckily, luckily his car is his actual car is magic, and that kind of makes up for everything in the end. Yeah. So, so basically, um, they Garth goes hops into Goliath to go shoot the missiles into Red Bluff while they put Michael in handcuffs in the RV along with the the mother and the general. And by the and way, he explains his 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 two his penultimate glory and his ultimate glory, <laughs> I guess. So, he he didn't want him there to see that he's the better knight. He actually just wanted him there so he could take it when he was done take Michael back to Africa, put Michael into the 
prisons that he had to go through. Yeah. I and Michael's think, not I, worried at all. I expected more from that too. Like, oh, I'm just going to go put you in there. Like, I thought it would be like a, I'm going to pass you off as me and you're going to spend your time there. Like, he kind of alludes to it, but it's it's a weird, subtle bit of writing because it's like he's like you're you're you know you go insane while you're in those those prisons and you know maybe that messed up your brain too and and like I thought he was trying to say that like you'll say that you're someone else but they won't believe you because they'll think you're crazy and but he never comes out and says it so I was like that's a weird bit of subtlety for this this type of show um but I guess that's the plan is that he's going to take Michael in his place Back to the prisons because I feel like if he goes there, I mean maybe no one will question it that why these two men look alike and they'll just be like okay this is the guy we'll take him thank you. It's very weird, uh, but it does like I said it does lead to the bad guy saying you will witness my penultimate glory, which I don't think a bad guy <laughs> has said in any TV show in the history of man. And then, yeah, the ultimate one's coming later. You just wait. <laughs> he, he's handcuffed, by the way. At this point, Michael is. It's very important that he's handcuffed. Yeah, he's sitting on this RV. They're watching as the the uh, as Goliath goes up to the doors, fires a bunch of rockets, which is which is facilitated by Garth hitting a button that says rocket launcher on it multiple times. <laughs> it doesn't. It does, I, I have no idea how it decides decides which rocket. Uh, yes, to fire. it just seems to be random. It's just I'm just gonna fire whatever rocket. Man, Goliath should talk. Goliath should talk. Um, Be like and, a really dumb guy yeah. or a sexy lady. <laughs> oh, see, that would be interesting. That would be a good way to do it. And this, then, is, this is where where our good, our good host, Josh, realized that it's called Goliath and the show stars David. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I put that together, uh, I guess, in the grand total, what, 90 minutes in? <laughs> I think I believe this so. It, it, it didn't happen after the shows had ended, which is, a, which is a triumph. Yeah, that's right. My brain is still sort of functional. Um, it, but so he blows up the doors of this little um, <laughs> this little model. <laughs> this I think you called it like a, a Skeletor castle model. <laughs> yeah, it's Snake Mountain. They're breaking a Snake Mountain. Uh, yes, it's it's actually pretty cute. I I like a lot of the model work, and you can I obviously want always this Goliath tell. Toy. Like it looks yeah. really cool. The Goliath toy is great. Like the the Knight Rider toy is great, and it's funny because it's like not every shot is a model. So they like they actually had the money to build. You know, they obviously have a real kit, but they also had the money to modify a big truck and and make it a make a Goliath. So, like, it's it's not like this show was super cheap. I mean, I'm sure that it wasn't, you know, nearly as expensive as shows today are, but like they still had somewhat of a budget to, to be able to do this. And I'm sure they damaged plenty of cars by making them jump through the air. Um and get destroyed when they landed. No, so. it has a pr- protective shell. <laughs> That's a shoot, it, brother. So we we see him blow up the uh, the doors and drive through into this like missile hangar where they are they are storing all these various missiles for the U.S. government. Um, there is a scene earlier where Devin goes to talk to General Maddox, and the guy's like, ah, "That can't happen. <laughs> we're we're not worried about some truck blowing up our doors." Where so was get the scene of, of him going like, "Well, that's the end of me." <laughs> <laughs> so, like, um, uh, they the truck goes in, and there's like what. Six guys inside. It's like the this worst like the, guarded missile silo in history. I mean, this is sold as like the most, like the 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 most impenetrable, most guarded base in all of America because it it's it has these fake rock wall doors and it's in the middle of the desert and it's, and it's holding a ton of like of. of Missiles that could be devastating if they fell into the wrong hands, and so there's like, like six dudes. Yeah, like I mean, the plan would like the plan of them going like breaking through the walls with their their super truck. Fine, like that is okay. But like, if there was like twenty guys in here, they couldn't do anything. Like instead, they I guess they gas the place. I don't remember them really seeing them do it, but they're all wearing gas masks, and the other guys kind of go away. But like. In the end, it's still like seven guys and and Garth 
like have to get out of the truck and do stuff. If there was more people in the other rooms or behind like, you know, bulletproof glass with like guns or turrets, there's nothing they could do. They still have to get out and get the missiles. But they do yeah, it very so, easily because there's nobody there. Yeah, there's nobody there. They have time to like load up the missiles and and use like a winch system to load them into the back of the the trailer and like all this stuff. And it seems like it's just remarkably easy c- compared to. He's been planning this for years to run right, run through, and grab them. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's penultimate glory. <laughs> yes, and so. They um they're able to escape uh with the uh with the missiles and things seem like they're going very well for Garth and very bad for Michael. Um but Michael then uh as they go outside to to see what's going on, um Kit he talks to Kit through his little uh, his little wrist communicator. Luckily, which nobody no one seems stops to question. Him. Yeah, like he's doing it at gunpoint, and there's like just keep walking. You can talk into your watch all you want. And and Kit swings up and like basically clips the poles that are holding up the the canopy, which falls on them and allows Michael to escape. And it's, that's it for them. <laughs> yeah, we never see them again. They're stuck in that canopy for the rest of time. I mean, I guess Elizabeth Knight and and Sambe Kuna die because Elizabeth Knight is in no more episodes That's of it. Knight Rider. She she um, is like in theory the 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 possibly like number one villain the show could have. Yeah, and the, but no, she's gone. This is it. She got caught in a canopy. Whoops. <laughs> she got tangled up, and now she's dead. So. um we get another showdown here with uh, Kit and Goliath, and they are racing towards each other once again. Um, Kit uh, gets rid of the handcuffs on Michael by oh, yes. magic. <laughs> that is unexplained. He's he, she, uh, Rita's like, how are you doing, Michael? And he's like, I'll be better when I get these handcuffs off. And then we see a shot from the dashboard, the little monitor that, that Kit has, and we see... Michael's hands go in, and then parts of the handcuffs glow red, and then they're off. And we're like, "How the fuck did that work? What did he do?" There's that. The only thing that's more unexplained than that is the camera systems both the bad guys and Kit have. Uh huh. Because when when the missile stealing is going on, we see it from what Elizabeth is seeing it back at home base and the bad guys. Yeah. So there's either somebody on his her team walking around with a with a live streaming up to satellite and back down uh, camera system or <laughs> Goliath can put out like Kit does because Kit also has these views points sometimes an invisible flying camera because <laughs> there's like there's literally no way they could see all the things they see it's always from a third person perspective of some something that we don't see yeah yeah it's it's pretty it's pretty wild like it is the the kind of hallmark of not really thinking it through television uh, and, and movies of just like, ah, eh, just put, it's just the camera that we're shooting it on. It's fine. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it, it's pretty amazing. But yeah, so now there's a time for a showdown number two. And he has, they finally know the weakness of yes. the, of oh, the yes. Goliath. There's a, there is a, a tiny bolt that connects the trailer to the truck. Which is and not that, coded in anything. Uh, yes, apparently that one bolt, they missed it. They missed the coding. So if they can shoot that, it will dislocate the trailer from the truck, which I, again, don't know how exactly that is helpful. Even Michael says it's, Michael acts like it's not that helpful because he has this this old saying about snakes. Oh, yes, that At, if you... They, cut it, off the head, it can still bite you. Yeah, that's how snakes are. That's how they, he goes, this, you know that old saying, that that's how snakes are. Cut off their heads and they still can bite. I'm like, that is the exact opposite of what they say. <laughs> yeah, you're supposed to cut the snake's head off so that it dies. Um, and but, once again, if that is the only weak point, is there anything that, the, the thing that they finally defeats Goliath with, was there did it re- why did it require it to not be attached to the back for that to work? I think it's simply because they didn't want to kill all those soldiers in the back of the the truck who are going who are sealed in with a kiss. Yeah, they they shoot the laser, they seal the back of the truck shut, the trailer. So they're going to suffocate with, with the soldiers and the missiles, which seems very dangerous. And then they are able to dislocate it from Goliath. And then 
they are about to have another showdown, and they're able to shoot the laser into the last rocket that Goliath has. Which so just causes cannot, a lot of smoke. Yeah, it cannot fire. It, it creates a lot of smoke, which I guess disrupts the the vehicle in some way and causes uh, Garth to jump out of the car and then go fight Michael hand to hand. Um, and then a little while were, later, it expl- the Goliath explodes. Yeah, Goliath blows up for some reason. They don't really give any reason because it's not like Michael was able to get the bomb into the car unless he did and we didn't see it because a lot of other stuff happened off camera. So that could have too. Right. That, um, that, I, I thought that the, the small explosive box was completely dropped. Like I, I uh, no, it. I don't think it, it. I don't think it came up at all unless they shot it into the car at the end and we just didn't see it happen. What? But we do get the big the big showdown, the thing that we were waiting on, which is uh, and I can see why they only did it once because it looks bad, um, which is a hand to hand fight between Michael and Garth um, or David Hasselhoff and his stunt double. <laughs> Uh, like we've mentioned this before on the podcast for shows from the 80s and 70s and movies that we've done back in Puerto Cast of like choreography before we figured, especially uh, American choreography uh, before we figured out what fighting looks like. <laughs> or that she, he, a- just, he just jumps in the air and kicks both feet in the like flails both feet at his uh, yeah there's like, a lot of there's a lot of jump kicks there's a lot of like flailing of arms like, like you have there, to put like you know like momentum and angle and force behind things you just can't like put your foot in the air and it would hurt <laughs> it's a pretty it's a pretty lackluster fight uh, um as you would expect but i don't think he could i don't think that the goliath costuming with his tight pants allowed him to do have the range of motions he could have <laughs> done with his legs yeah it's it's um yeah it's pretty it's pretty bad but he's able michael is able to defeat garth um by flipping him over his head and punching dropping him, him on the ground and punching him in the face and then he is down for the count and the episode is over <laughs> we don't know what happens to Garth, I can we see Goliath just, explode, but then I guess we just assume, well, I guess Garth is going to jail. Who knows what happens to the mother? Who knows what happens to, to Sambe Kuna? With what happens to those soldiers? Doesn't matter. Moving what happened on. to the gold record? <laughs> yeah. We, like, we don't get any of that. We don't get, like, I there's no esca- wrap-up scene. I assume he can escape again because he got captured earlier in the episode and got out with no problem. Yeah, I, I think that is what happens at the beginning of the other one. I did... I did briefly read ahead as to like the next Garth Goliath episode, and it specifically says that Garth is rescued from prison by Goliath. So which, hopefully he has an he has a personality and voice in episode two. They 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 have remedied the obvious problem. Where he, I'm I'm hoping so, but also that leaves a lot of unexplained questions. So I'm I'm so very in, in, curious in, in episode in in episode or series one here of the two. Goliath double parters. First, he seals Kit's shell, his delicious hard candy shell. <laughs> and two, in the second one, he steals his brain. <laughs> right? That's how you I do it. So. Yeah, I think so. I think. And you're then right, the actually, only difference cause... between them is who has the more clever driver. <laughs> I think yes. I think you're right because basically the the synopsis for Goliath Returns is that someone has rebuilt Goliath. And they somehow get, Goliath has returned. Somehow Goliath has returned. Back, and they so, get it was Garth. all explained in, for, in a Fortnite event. <laughs> that's right. Every time I tell somebody who doesn't know that that that's what happened, they think I'm making shit up. Yeah, no, that, that is what happened, the, though. That is one of the worst things that you could have ever done for a a franchise like that. Like if a third part to go yeah. to do that. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, which would be amazing, you wouldn't. It, you wouldn't believe me if I told you. Yeah, we'll just leave it at that. You can look it up. You'll, you can you'll, look it up. We'll look up what, what what movie franchise had a major plot point explained in a Fortnite video game event <laughs> instead of on screen in the movie, and it is never exp- it is never explained in yeah. the movie. Never referenced either. Never referenced, but it happened in Fortnite. Yeah, so it it looks like this person uh, rebuilds Goliath and gets Garth out of prison and then wants to, like you said, put Kit's CPU into Goliath. Makes sense. 
So they want to, they want to, they had the body, now could they you want ima- the brain. We could have him do a bad guy voice. Oh, man. William Daniels doing a bad guy voice? Yes. Hello, Micah. That's all you'd have him do. Just a little more gritty. Maybe yeah. he says bad words like jerk. <laughs> I really hate that butthole. I really hate that floozy. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing what happens when Goliath returns. I, I'm um, I'm curious. After one ep, like an episode came out, they watched it, they saw the, the feedback. If what they think was good and bad about the choices made by David Hasselhoff in his performance as the evil devil. And yeah, what I'm, and what they bring back, or what they can, or what they they make any changes, or it's exactly the same. I am very curious about that because it is the greatest weakness of this episode that has many weaknesses. Um, is his performance and choices in it? It's also the funniest part of it. So if you're watching it to laugh at it, it is that. But like. In a show that is not supposed to be funny in that way, it was a very, very, very mainstream show at the time, which would have a lot of feedback. I wonder if back then they thought that was a good performance. And if given a chance to do a second run at it, they do anything different. Yeah, I'm curious. I'm curious to see what they do with this return. I'm curious to see if there's any sort of, um, uh, like, if there's any sort of, um, like, finality to the character. Because he doesn't come back again after those next episodes. Like, do they kill Garth? Do they just put him back in prison? Because he's escaped that multiple times, and, and it doesn't seem like that's that big of a, a hurdle. So does he have to, like... I mean, that's what I kind of want to see. That's what let, let's do that. Let's let's put out like this is what we want to see in in the second part in Goliath Returns. I would like to see some finality. I would like to see Goliath blow up again, but this time Garth is inside. Yes. I mean, so that'd be very they should they should they should die together because they are iconic together people still talk about it all the time do you do you think we'll get a scene where kit cpu is put into goliath i want a scene where garth's mind is put into goliath (laughs) yes oh my god that would be great instead of getting kit cpu they put garth's brain into goliath they they attach wires to his brain and then he's he's driving the truck around Yes, like he is the truck. So like next for the for the third time you bring Garth back, uh, Mike uh, David Hasselhoff doesn't have to do so much work. He can yeah, just do some it's just voiceover. a brain in a jar with some with some pro, uh, probes and stuff in it that are connected to the truck. Just just have little it somewhere robot in the arms truck, that are the, coming out of the jar driving the, uh, the wheel. Just somewhere in the truck have the Zordon thing. So it's it's inside the Zordon thing <laughs> is Garth's face, staring yeah. hard. It's just a still Rangers. image. <laughs> it's a still image and they clutch cargo the mouth so yes. that somebody else can do the dialogue. Be perfect. I mean, perfect television right there. Um, all right. So are we I, I can't remember last time. I think we decided to hold off on a review until we had watched both parts. And so now we have done that. So I think we can review this episode and then we'll save the review of the next one until after we've watched both parts there. Um so I think where are we going to put this on our our scale of weirdness? I was pr- I was pretty uh, pretty sure I was going to go pretty low. Yeah. After part one, because it's it's really for a talking car show, nothing of real craziness happens. Sure. And then the laser magic started happening a lot more. Um, that and this world where no one. No one has any idea. No one cares about perfect doubles, and which is the entire point of all these episodes is that people are like, holy shit, they're actually doubles. No one cares. Um, the head of his department, his, his uh, organization being so bad at it, <sighs> in not a way that's played for comedy, he just is, is weird. Um, but everything else is so fucking like... An episode where you didn't have him doing the Gareth stuff 
to laugh at. Like, take that out. Really boring. Really not doing a lot of fun stuff. Um, so I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go right in the middle of five for now. It's the car's magic. Not that doesn't have any idea what technology can and can't do. Um, which is par for the course back then. But also, there are times where you're like, it really breaks up. Like, wait, what? Why can he do that? Um, theme song, super great, but it's not. The rest of the show isn't as weird as a talking car show you think would be. Yeah, I, I can get on board with that. I feel like, yeah, I feel like five is probably fair. I, I think that there, if if we had gotten more face-to-face moments, if we had gotten the um, the kind of cliche, which one am I supposed to shoot, or the... You get se- more from Krusty and Homer both dressed as clowns. <laughs> <laughs> I'm seeing double four Garths. Um, I, I think that if if we'd gotten more of that, like if we had gotten more of like if we'd gotten a scene where Michael has to put on Garth's clothes and put on a mustache and pretend to be him, like I think that I would have given it a slightly higher, more fun grade. The, um, but but the whole yeah, concept I think five of, is right. The whole concept of why they have the same face is so bizarre that it should go higher, but. The fact is that no one in the show thinks it's weird. Yeah, they don't do enough with it. Like, r- literally, Rita, I think, is the only person who seems surprised by it. She's like, man, you look so much like him. And, like, she's the only one who keeps bringing it up. Everybody else is just like, yeah, it's fine. Even Michael himself is like, oh, okay, this is weird, but whatever. And it's, like I said, we said it. He goes and says, like, why does he look like me? And Devin goes, like, well, we thought he, your father, your his father thought he was dead, so he made you look like him, and it's like, but you didn't replace him in society because he didn't have the same name. He, he wasn't presenting you as him. Yeah. So that is so fucking weird, <laughs> like really weird. And Michael has, like, much like Chuck Todd on Meet the Press, uh, rest in peace. You're sh- you're no longer the host after this summer. No follow up question. <laughs> <laughs> just let's the bad the, the the person who says something crazy say something crazy and instead of saying like hey you made up something or that's really weird just let it sit there and goes on to the next thing <laughs> it was so weird like you, you, you your first answer is why would he no no, no i understand because that is you've given a reason but that is not why he did it because why he did it is a deeply psychologically weird thing to do to a grown man to a grown man like you're gonna take you're gonna do you're gonna take over my legacy and also you're gonna look exactly like my son who i who was a who to me was a failure you're gonna be him except better why (laughs) because he's i assume he's dead no that's not why why what a we- what a weird thing for such a mainstream show to just throw out there. Just bizarre. Yeah, yeah it's a, it's a it's an insane uh it's an insane thing. But um I think that's going to do it for this episode of Center of Weirdness. Um we'll be back next time with more uh exciting fun insane television series. We're going to keep going with the Summer Nights series. Would We're you say that this more- par- these first two parts have been our penultimate glory. <laughs> That's right. Our penultimate glory here with these episodes. We get our ultimate glory next time when we're talking about the the conclusion of the Garth Goliath saga um, with Goliath Returned Part 1. Uh, but until then, I've been Josh. I've been Skinner. And we want you to keep it weird out there. Keep it nightly. <laughs> keep it Kira nightly. <laughs> well, we should have just thrown a freaking Kira Knightley something into this series. <laughs> there you go. She had it. She was. She was a a, a girl in the Phantom Menace. <laughs> <laughs>
You've been listening to Center of Weirdness. If you like this show, rate and review us wherever you find it, but especially on Apple Podcasts. You can listen to every episode at centerofweird.com, where you can also find all of the old PredictoCast episodes. And if you want to get in touch with us to tell us about a show we should cover, hit us up on Twitter at Weird Center. As always, thanks for listening. 